So, on the worksheet 4 19, number 8, we are given that you have 8 or 6 sides, so n equals 6, and we're given the area of 55.43 square feet. So, what we have is in our formula, 55.43 equals the length of the side squared times 6 over 4 times the tangent of 180 over 6. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start out with the 55.43. And we are going to multiply by the 4 times the tangent of 180 over 6. So times 4 times the tangent of 180 over 6 is just 30. So 4 times the tangent of 30. Then we're going to divide by 6, because we got the 6 here to divide by. <clears throat> Gives us 21.335. Now that's S squared, so what do we have to do? Square root it. 4.62 feet is the length of the side. So you get that S is 4.62. What's that? Okay. Number 10. Regular hexagon. <clears throat> With a 10 foot side and it's cut across here. So we're looking for this area. So the area of the whole hexagon would be 10 squared times 6 over 4 times the tangent of 180 degrees over 6. So that's going to be 10 squared times 6 divided by 4. Also then divided by the tangent of 180 divided by 6. So 259.81. Sound right? Yes, no, don't care. Okay. Now, though, we've got that would be the whole thing. We're missing this area here. We know that this angle here is 120 degrees. How do we know it's 120? That's a regular hexagon. So being a regular figure, it's n minus 2, so 6 minus 2 times 180, which is 720 degrees total, divided by 6, because there's 6 angles, it's 120 degrees per angle. This is 10, and this is 10, so the area of that triangle is 10 times 10 times the sine of 120 over 2, which is... 43.3, you got it. So we subtract. That ends up giving us 216.51 square feet. What do you think? Better to start sticking the A? We subtracted that from this. You get confused, Andrew. 259 is the whole thing. Then we subtracted out the 43, which is this little piece. Might have to divide by 2 because it's a triangle. That's our formula. Remember the area of a triangle is A times B times sine of angle C over 2. Okay, I also want to go over number 15. Number 15 has a misprint, by the way, that makes it impossible to do. So we're going to change it slightly. 44 feet, 32 feet here, 73 degrees here, 26, and we're changing this to 24 from 20. Now if I cut it across here, we can find the area of this triangle here, A times B times sine of C over 2, right? That area would 
simply be what 673 or something like that 0.24 I believe <clears throat> square feet okay so now this triangle over here we've got we need more information we don't have that angle but we can find this side here how can we find that side if I call that side C well C squared is equal to a squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of angle C. C will come out to be 46.22 about feet. <clears throat> Law cosines, you got it. And now we have all three sides of that triangle, which means we can use Hero's formula. Hero's formula, remember that? You have the perimeter. You define the semi-perimeter, which is the perimeter divided by 2. The area is then equal to the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus side A times the semi-perimeter minus side B. And remember, that look familiar? You find that area, which comes out to be 220.16 square feet, which adds up to be 893. Point four zero square feet. Okay. Have you ever seen that little symbol there, by the way? It's the foot symbol with a square around it. Yeah, it's just, it's just for square feet is all it is. I try to avoid doing it in class, but that's kind of the architect engineer's abbreviation for square feet. Yep. Yeah, the sides are A, B, and C are the sides. And, of course, S is the semi-perimeter where you add up all the sides and divide by 2. Yeah. P, the perimeter, is you add up all the sides. S is you take the perimeter and divide it by 2. So S is like 48.11 or something like that. <sighs> Number 16 works the same, by the way, but instead of adding the other triangle, you're subtracting the other triangle. 16 should come out to be like 781. Well, I have like all the sides being like 26.4 and 26. Yep, and the 46.22, yep. Divide by 2. Yep. Usually like 48.11. Um, add them all up, hit equals first, and then divide by 2. And as I said, number 16, you're doing the exact same calculation, only you have to subtract the missing piece rather than adding the extra triangle. Today's new stuff. We're going to look at finding the area from coordinates. Now we're going to start out by looking at basically coordinates on like a graph. Let's say I have a point over here. We'll call this 12, 4. Another point here, I'll call it 2, 9. This one here we'll call like a negative 6, 2. Negative 4, negative 7. And we'll call this one 9, negative 3, and then we'll connect it. So we have this shape where we know the coordinates. Now, you might be asking, well, why do we care? Well, if you're looking at doing surveying, and you can use a GPS for surveying, you, you pick a, an origin like this, and you use your GPS to set coordinates at each of the corners of a piece of property or of a lot or whatever you're looking at, and you can use this process for finding the areas. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick a point to start at. Now since I did the 12-4 first, I'll pick the 12-4. And I'll start with 12-4. Then we're going to move around the shape counterclockwise. So what would be the next point? 2-9. Next would be negative 6-2. And then... 
negative 4, negative 7, and 9, negative 3. Now, this part's important. At this point, we have gone to every corner of the figure, but we have not gone around the whole shape. What do we have to do to finish it off? We have to go back to where we started. So we have to repeat that starting point again, 12, 4. <clears throat> It's called closing the, the loop. You have to get back to where you started. So that first point is going to be at the top of the list and at the bottom of the list. Now what we're going to do is what's called diagonal products. We're going to do 12 times 9, which is 108. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 6 times negative 7, positive 42. Negative 4 times negative 3, <clears throat> positive 12. 9 times 4 is 36. If we add those all up, we get 202, right? <clears throat> Sound right? Looks good to you? Okay. Two oh two. Now if we go the diagonal products the other way, 4 times 2 is 8. 9 times negative 6 is negative 54. <clears throat> 2 times negative 4, negative 8. Negative 7 times 9, negative 63. And negative 3 times 12, negative 36. We add that all up, we get, I think, a negative 153. Somebody double check me. Yes? No? What's that? Colt's still typing. Negative 153. Okay, now here's what you do. You take the larger minus the smaller. So in this case, it's going to be 202 minus a negative 153, which is going to give us what? 355, correct? Divide by 2. Okay. 177.5 is the area. That's the area. Well, that all depends on what, if this grid was labeled in feet, that would be square feet. If the grid was labeled in rods, that would be square rods. Most of the time when you're surveying, it's in rods. Rods? It's rod squared. You can start with any point you want to. <clears throat> Find the area of that. I'll start writing it out while you guys are. 67 does it for me. Anybody else got something different? I mean, we're ready for homework? Sure. Let's do it. There's a